In this tutorial, let's work through three simple one light setups for epic portraits when you're in an awesome location. What's up friends, my name is Pi. Welcome out to Joshua Tree. I'm gonna jump straight into this. I figure we talk gear first. So let's just work through the setup that we're gonna use on, on all of today's shots, okay? So first I'm gonna start with the modifier because we just got the new Profoto Softbox lineup and it's pretty awesome. So this is the three foot Okta and look at how small this is. This is gonna fit anywhere you want it to go and setting it up, oh my goodness, it couldn't be easier. All you do is take the ring out, grab one side, fold it back and we're done and good to go. So that's it, no rods, no messing around with anything. I do have the half stop diffusion in this. So I actually replaced the full stop diffusion with half stop because it's very bright outside. So I want to get more light output. And for the light itself, where I was going to be using the Provoto B10 Plus to help me light and we're good to go. For the camera setup, I've got the remote on my Canon R5. It's my workhorse camera. And for this scene, I'm going to start with the 7200, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. But look, when it comes to camera lens, use whatever you got. Take the techniques that you learn here and just apply it. Let's get into it right now. All right, so we have our couple. This is Sonam and Manav. They're a real couple, actually our past clients. So thank you guys for being here. We place them kind of deep into this cactus area, which is, if you're here, by the way, shooting, be very careful. We've already gotten pricked many times, okay? No pain. Now, whoever said that's full of it, man. I've been out here plenty of times without doing this. This one went deep. I'd like to say that we just bumped the cactuses with the softbox, and the softbox is cactus resistant, unlike my foot not cactus resistant. First scene, we're in this beautiful cactus garden. We've got layers of detail in front of us going all the way through, plus we have this mountain. Whenever I come to a scene like this, one of the first things I'm thinking of is, why not try out a telephoto? See, a telephoto lens like this one, it's gonna help me to really pull the detail forward. So we're gonna bring the background closer. We're gonna make the whole scene just look more full. So I'm gonna go to that lens. The next thing, we're using one light setups for all of this, right? But it's not really a one light setup when we're outside, we still have the sun. So I want you guys to recognize what we're doing with the sun. They're positioned with mostly their backs kind of to the sun. The sun's off to the right a little bit. They're kind of to the left a little bit, but mostly the sun is behind them. From that, we get this entire scene just beautifully backlit. On top of that, their hair, their edging, their clothes, it has that backlight as well. I've placed them against the mountain because I want to be able to see that backlight. See, if I put their heads in front of you know, the, the cactuses, the highlights of those cactuses are going to kind of remove, delete. It's going to kind of cover up the hair light that's on them. So this is what I'm looking at for the composition. When I go in, I'm going to go ahead and take a shot just of what I'm thinking for a tighter shot. It's going to be right around here. Okay. And then for a wider shot, I'll probably go somewhere around here. And that looks fantastic. I already love the natural light look of that, but we want to go for something with a little more drama. So the next piece Let's go to the next step of, we're gonna use the camp framework throughout the whole day, right? So composition first, that's what I'm looking at. The next piece is ambient exposure. This is where you set the intention of your shot. Now here, I'm gonna bring my shutter speed up to one 1,000th. I'm gonna go low ISO F2.8. And this is what I'm gonna get for the overall exposure right now. So when you set that ambient light exposure, what you're setting is intention. The darker you go with that, the more dramatic the shot's gonna be. And by the way, if you have a camera now with global shutter, that's even better because you don't have to use high-speed sync, you get more power out of your light as well. With that, now I'm gonna modify. So this is where I'm gonna add light. This is the first time that I'm actually gonna go ahead and add the remote to my camera. Gaurav is in the frame right there, and he's gonna bring that Okta really close. Now, I'm not gonna worry too much. It's gonna be in the frame for some of my shots, right? but there's a lot of ways we can remove this now. We used to have to take a play shot, but now there's so many AI tools that it's really easy just to remove. I love those shots. Little bonus tip, one of my favorite things to do in a scene like this, I'm gonna step forward and see how we have all this backlighting right over this cactus. I'm gonna go ahead and stop down. So I'm gonna go to like F11, so that way I have a lot of depth in this shot. One, 200 uh, and 100 ISO. And I'm going to go right up to this and shoot straight through it. Now, I love this. The depth, because we're shooting at F11, we can see what it is in the foreground. And we're using that foreground to create this little window, this little frame into the scene that creates a really interesting image. And that light popping right on them, oh my goodness, it just lifts them right out of the frame. It's absolutely awesome. Easy peasy. All we did here is get the octave about 45 degrees off to the right, get it close, and we're going full power. 
let's go and do another shot. Scene number two, we've got this amazing rock face. I've positioned myself right here so I can kind of use this rock to kind of bring the sun in and out of the frame. And what I love about this is uh, I'm gonna kind of poke back and forth. So you'll notice that if I just move my camera this way and take a shot, the light's not poking out. If I move this way, I can kind of get the sun poking into the, the frame, right? And I can control the flare. So I don't want too much. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna set my intention. I'm gonna go ahead and darken the exposure a bit. So I'm good with this being at, let's go like F 2.8. Let's go one 1,000th. And what I really want here is notice how I have them framed. I'm actually placing Manav and Sonam right against that dark rock. So when you see them kind of looking towards me right now, you'll notice that you have this perfect edge lighting on them. So again, light number one is the sun. And it's not only creating this kind of, there's no other word for it, the shaft of light that's coming through the scene that's sort of lighting this up, but it's also edge lighting them against the darker background. Now this go around, what I'm gonna have Guarav do is I'm gonna have him hold the light up so we get a butterfly light. So what it feels like in this, with that butterfly light directly over them, there's just a, a little heavenly light kind of lighting them up from the front side and giving me a kiss of light while they're highlighted against this darker background. And I love this look. This is so easy to remove in post. Don't be afraid of leaving that light in and getting it close. Here we're really close. We're using a butterfly setup, which is basically directly over their faces and kind of shooting almost straight on. And then we're going to get our, our shot. I'll have Gorov step out. We'll do a plate shot just for safety. That way, in case like our AI removal type stuff doesn't work, we still have a plate shot that we can just layer and quickly mask out. Okay, so I've got that wider shot. I'm going to use this same butterfly setup and push in now. This time I'm going to shoot right under the light. I'm going to go wide angle on this, but kind of from a close distance. And now I can kind of work the background into this in a way that's going to look a lot different. We're going to bring the subject up close. We're also gonna showcase the scene, the background. We can even play with the flare as well. Last scene, we're gonna go quick here because we are losing light. So check this out. We're gonna light a little bit differently in this scene. One of my favorite things to do is I'll kind of shoot a shot a little bit from his perspective. So Sonam, you're gonna kind of hold his hand and she's looking and facing towards the sun. And I'm gonna frame it so the sun is coming like right between them basically. So I get this beautiful flare. I'm at one 1,000th. I've got everything dialed in, right? Now, the only thing here is that there's no light on them that kind of like brings out a little detail. So what I'm gonna do is have Guarav stand over there. And so he's lighting actually on the opposite side of them, almost from the angle of the sun. I'm gonna pop the remote on and we're just gonna go full blast, okay? Okay, I love this. So just compared to that natural light image, this little tiny bit of light that we're adding, and it's, it's a lot of power that we're shooting, but Guarav's at a good distance. So we're only getting a little bit of light, but that's all we want. We just want a little bit to lift some of the detail in the shadows. We get such a great difference. It's a subtle but powerful difference in the final image. I hope all these things helped. I'm going to get back to shooting, but in the meantime, we're going to link up all the gear that we used. I got to say, these soft boxes are a dream to use. They're not only portable, they are lightweight. They're super easy to set up. They are durable. Everything that I kind of wanted, and now I have it in the full pro photo range, so we can use it with the B10s, the B10 pluses, everything. Anyway, check them out. In the meantime, if you guys have any comments, questions, leave them down below. I read all your comments, get tons of ideas from each of you. So I love seeing those. And we'll link up everybody too in the shoot so you guys can give them a follow if you'd like. Oh, and I just found out that Mono is actually a professional golfer too. So if you dig golfing, check him out on the tour. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.